the unified IBA and IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing platinum trimmed with black and weighing in at 130 pounds. His professional record, an excellent 33 victories, including 21 knockouts with four defeats. From Pensacola, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is the number one ranked challenger in the world, Derek Smoke. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing camouflage and weighing in also at 130 pounds. He has a perfect professional record, consisting of 30 bouts, 30 victories with 24 knockouts. From Sacramento, California, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated IBF, IBA Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Diego Chico. I gave you instructions in the dressing room. Are there any questions? I want a good, clean fight. Please obey my commands. When I say break, step back. Defend yourself at all times. Touch gloves now. Let's go to work. We've seen Corrales look wonderful against fighters who stand in front of him or come at him. Now he will be tested by a fighter who has great movement when he wants to. This will be yet another test. One of Corrales' primary sparring partners to prepare him for the fight, Kevin Kelly, man who fought Derek Gaynor twice, winning the first by Bring knockout, the the losing the second by decision. Of course, Corrales wanted to train with Kelly because Kelly, like Gaynor, is a southpaw. But Gainer by far the range here of the two southpaws. And he starts out trying to approach Corrales with a left-hand lead. Corrales just trying to move in and get a look early in round one. Don't grab him. It was a hard left counter inside by Corrales. He has quick reflexes and good eyes. Emmanuel Derek Gaynor is a fighter who in the past has averaged about 45 punches around by CompuBox numbers. And the belief on the people, on the part of the people in his corner is that he'll have to be more aggressive tonight against Corrales. Uh, he definitely is going to have to be more aggressive because Corrales is putting the pressure on him right away. And it's really strange to see two guys this tall, nearly six feet tall, fighting at 130 pounds. So who's going to be the aggressor is the problem. But I believe that the heads of makers have been a very good fight. There, Gator shows you his desire to be aggressive and to begin the exchanges against Corrales as coming out of the break. Gator whacked Corrales three straight times before Corrales seemed to be ready to fight again. Corrales is putting a lot of pressure on him, and, and, and he's putting most of it, catching most of the punches. It may look effective, but he's catching most of them. And going down a stretch, it's going to be how strong is Gator going to be mentally? as this pressure is continually applied. Corrales says that he injured his right hand in the third round of his last fight against John Brown. Go has not been a particularly Break. long Stop. layoff Stop. since that time. He went Let through extensive therapy to try to get the knuckles on the right hand feeling good again and hasn't shown any reluctance to throw it in the first round here. Well, he's going to have to throw it because I think Gaynor is really emotionally fired up for this fight because more than anything else, he wants to prove something and to satisfy Roy Jones. I don't think Roy Jones has ever put so much interest Break. in any other boxer other than himself. On this. Don't grab his head anymore. Diego Corrales has fought eight southpaws in his career and knocked seven of them out. Some right-handed fighters, of course, have trouble getting going against the southpaw. And there's Gaynor landing a left-hand lead and another left-hand lead as Gorales tries to move in closer. He, he's landed about a half a dozen of those in this fight, and he's giving he's giving Corrales different looks that are confusing him a little at the moment. Well, he's going to have to do it a long time. Corrales has put a lot of pressure on him. And what has probably made Corrales effective with southpaws in the past is he throws right-hand leads very effectively. That's one of his best punches. 
And that is very going to be very effective, particularly fighting with a southpaw. And he fights out of an open stance, so he's ready to punch with either hand. Yes, right. He's always in great position, much like a Felix Trinidad type style. Always in perfect position. That's a good round. Use a lot of feints. A lot of feints. If you move to your left and you come back to your right, drop that good straight left hand off. Then spin out with your hook, okay? If you're good to go, yep. give him a ring. Hey. Keep it like that on the head. You're good to go, okay? That's Are those left hands getting through? Seconds out. It Seconds may look out. he may look so from two or three sides of the ring, but from that camera angle, locked by Corrales, who has been told to start going to the body more, Emmanuel, the correct advice? I think it's a good advice, but I, what he's doing right now is, is risky because if it goes in this pattern all the way through, he could lose a decision. But from what I can see, I know that Gaynor's going to have problems holding him off with the way it's going because he's not landing that effective on Corrales. It looks good to the crowd because Gaynor's a very flashy puncher, much on a Roy Jones type, but he's not being that effective at this point in time. And Corrales is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on him, and I'm quite sure it's going to be more intensified as the fight goes on. But Corrales in the first round put pressure on without throwing many punches. Now he That's catches right. Gaynor and gets ready to open up a little bit. In the first round, by CompuBox Stop. numbers, Gaynor threw 52 punches to only 16 for Corrales. So Corrales was saving his energy in round one and getting a look at what Gaynor would do. Now he begins to cut off the ring with a little bit more of a purpose. And also, if you notice, uh, it was the first right hand lead that he shot off the back, which is one of his favorite punches. And I think as the fight progresses and he gets closer and closer, it's going to be a more effective punch in this fight. Okay, don't hold. Don't hold. Box. suspect Corrales will be willing to take some risks against Gaynor. He stated to us yesterday that Kevin Kelly told him Gaynor, quote, couldn't punch a lick. Well, I don't think Gaynor's a devastating puncher, but he punches good enough to get his attention. And I think he's a much better puncher than he was four or five years ago. He's a much better puncher than he was when he fought Kevin Kelly. He commits more to his punches now. That's true, and it's, it's funny. I thought when the greatest fight I ever saw him fight was the fight that he lost with Kevin Kelly when he lost basically fought by one punch. But he fought a great fight up until that point. If you don't hear much noise from the crowd, it, it's because there isn't much crowd <laughs> and there isn't much going on in the ring to inspire the crowd we have. What's the significance of the relatively small crowd here, Larry? Well, I suppose somebody might say that uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. has not yet gotten to the point where people have to feel they have to see him yet. Gainer lands two left hands there. The that first a, one flush on the jaw. That was a great left hand. In fact, the, the normal fight he would have knocked out. I, he, he stunned him with the punch, but I'm surprised that Corrales is coming back. And now Corrales comes back and begins delivering combinations as he corners Gaynor against the ropes. Already Corrales makes clear that he isn't going to want to give Gaynor much room to box. So Gaynor's going to have to gain that room with his feet. And if Corrales can cut off the ring, he's going to force Gaynor to fight his fight. Perfect. Here we see our partner, Roy Jones, sitting quietly behind the corner. And aware of the uh, <coughs> monitor to his left, able to see that he's on camera. RJ, who uh, involves himself in so Stop many different business. Out, okay? Okay, take a little rinse. All right, deep breath. Yeah, dig in the inside, my baby. Bring you in there, dig. Dig in there, okay? Side to side. You looking good. We, uh, we all right. 
There's a good straight left. Perfect left. Momentarily stunned Corrales, gathers himself, and goes on to probably win that round. But despite that, round two changed the momentum of the fight as Corrales threw 48 punches after having only thrown 16 in the first round, and by doing so, he limited Gaynor to only 26 out output punches, half as many as Gaynor threw in round one. So Corrales shows that when he wants to be aggressive, he'll make it difficult for Gaynor to get off. You know, I'd also like to point out, even though Corrales is the taller of the two, if you notice, he keeps his hands very close, unlike most tall guys, very close, which means he's going to be more effective in closer range, even though he's taller, because he fights with his hands in a position where he can punch very effective by just twisting his body with punches. And he's going to be more effective going down the stretch than the shorter fighter, fighting at this distance right here. Right now, they're fighting in a phone booth. And you can see that Corrales has a comfort level with this. Can Gaynor be as comfortable? That's a big question. Work. Gaynor missing twice upstairs. Corrales punching to the body. Corrales is more effective. Oh, there it is. I was just going to say, Corrales is still more effective, you can see, in that position, and much more comfortable. A beautiful short picture perch. Perfect Nine. short left hook. Hungry. Yeah, and it was okay. a punch that was effective because he never saw the punch. Well, Corrales, is, Corrales is much more effective at this distance. Even though he's told us the shorter punches are going to be something that's going to be very difficult for Gaynor to see. Textbook stop as Corrales squares up with his opponent along the ropes. He squared his shoulders up, fired punches with both hands, didn't give Gaynor a chance to move. There's no three knockdown no, no, rule in this fight. Gaynor has stopped it. Why has he stopped it? No, Manuel, no, no. it looked to me we're as though Gaynor was up on his feet and coherent. I, I definitely feel that he should have given him an opportunity. I think it was a quick stoppage. I don't and get it. I, I definitely feel that he should have given him an opportunity. But that is the decision of the referee. Maybe he Gain saw something that stops the fight. Yeah, maybe he saw something in Gaynor's eyes. There is a safety first mentality in Las Vegas which is applauded by most in the sport. And Nady decides that, for whatever reason, Gaynor shouldn't continue against a Diego Corrales who was making his imprint felt. Well, as, as you said, the pressure ultimately got a Gaynor into this shoulder-to-shoulder, toe-to-toe exchange, Emmanuel, and that's not his fight. No, Gaynor still is from the school where he has a stylish type of fight, and he has to have room. And the Rega, uh, Diego Corrales is much more comfortable at a shorter range, even though he, he's taller. And how about... How about the mustard Corrales got on the left hook in that short space, huh? It, it was great. And the punches that hurt you are the punches that you don't see. And that was the perfect example. It was a short left hook over Gaynor's shoulder that he never even saw. And it, and it didn't have to be that hard. I felt that if the referee had permitted the fight to have continued, the outcome would have been the same. He Somewhere along the line. Somewhere way. I don't think he would have made it much more than another round. So you see the two-fisted talent of Der Diego Corrales, who took the first round to get a look at Gar Derek Gaynor and try to figure what Gaynor was going to do. Took the second round to, to basically force Gaynor into fighting his fight, and then in the third round, destroyed him. It. it was a systematic destruction job. I don't believe it, yo. Beautiful piece of work by again. Diego Corrales. He makes his statement. And now we'll sit back to see what Floyd Mayweather can do. First knockdown, Emmanuel, and here's the left hook coming up. It's the punch you don't see there. He never saw the punch, particularly when you're a southpaw. The punch that you're most effective to get with is a left hook because all southpaws are watching for a straight right hand all the time. But the main thing is he was just too close on him. He couldn't fight effectively that close. And if you notice, Corrales is very effective at this short distance, even with his long arms. An aggressive Corrales knew he was in a finishing situation, squared his feet and his shoulders so that he could fire at Gaynor with both hands. Now let's listen to the conversation between Gaynor and Jay Nady. Over. Oh. No, no, I'm sorry. Well, 
I tend to agree with you, Emmanuel, that the result was going to be the same, but I don't get the stoppage. Yeah, I definitely think, and I hear them say that he was okay, and his eyes seemingly had cleared. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars of the knockout. Gentlemen, following the second knockdown, referee Jay Nady calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 50 seconds of round number three. The winner and still the undefeated IBF, IBA junior lightweight champion of the world. Diego Chico Corrales. Final punch at numbers, and you'll see that uh, in part of three rounds not three complete rounds they both threw about the same number of punches and landed at a similar rate though of course Corrales's were the more damaging blows although Gaynor did land some quality power shots in the first and second rounds you can see Gaynor landing 27 out of 67 power shots that's not an unhappy statistic but Corrales 32 out of 95 virtually all of Corrales's landed punches were power shots and once he got the left hook going at close range that was the deciding factor in the fight. Larry Merchant standing by with the champion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. I'm sorry we got our signals crossed in here. Congratulations, Chico. Were you surprised after he seemed to do so well in the first round and a little bit of the second round that suddenly he stopped and went shoulder to shoulder and toe to toe with you? No, I knew in my time he was gonna slow down. I didn't expect him to slow down this fast, but I, I knew he was gonna have to stand there, stand there and fight. As long as I kept the pressure on, kept throwing punches whenever I got chances, and whenever he tied me up, I'm the bigger, stronger, more physical person in there, so it wears you down a little faster, but I didn't think it'd wear him out this fast, but I knew he was gonna sit down eventually. He hit you with a pretty good left hand in the second round. It seemed to stun you momentarily. How big of a punch was it? It wasn't anything. It just hit me, knocked me off balance, and I came right back. Mm -hmm. And they never felt anything from it. What is the secret of how well you fight as a very tall man on the inside? The secret is my dad. He's always told me that a, a complete fighter is going to fight inside as well as outside, regardless of if you're the taller one or not. And he worked with me a lot for all of that and working on the side because eventually there's going to come a time where I can't box everybody. I may have to come out and fight and I have to know how to do it well. What? You fought two fighters before this who were right in front of you all the time who, who were, and you can have a chance to stand there and figure them out. What was the different part of having to fight a southpaw who had some movement tonight? I had to go to him. I got to show a different part of Diego again. You know, this is it's a whole new thing. I can show I can come forward. I can I can keep the pressure on. I can land the good shots inside, and I know how to keep stay inside there and not you know give up or get frustrated. There's been talk of a big fight between you and uh, Mayweather later this year. Is, do you feel the timing is right for such a fight? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we're both right now. We're very strong. We're, we're proving that we're very strong, and I think we're, we, it's, it's a good thing for, to happen. All right, let me ask uh, Bob Aram, who uh, promotes both of you. Bob, is it realistic that that fight will come off this year? Well, I would hope so, but Larry, Floyd got business to take care of tonight, and we'll have to see how he does tonight. But yeah, down the road, if Floyd is successful, that's the fight I want to make. That's the fight which will determine who's the best 130 pounder in the world. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry. Emmanuel Stewart, uh, he's terrific now at 130, and obviously there's a lot of business to be done at 130, 135, 140, but he's 22 years old, he's six feet tall. I got a feeling this kid is going to be a devastating welterweight someday. He could possibly be one of those guys could stay at a junior welterweight, possibly, you know, but, it, but the one thing about it, he's extremely physical, too, to be that tall. And it's going to be hard for anybody to beat him. I, I think Mayweather has a very solid, legitimate 130-pound challenge on his hand. Well, you've been saying all along that you're training Prince Nassim at 126 pounds with an eye toward a possible showdown down the road with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Would you fight this guy, six feet tall? He could possibly be even a more difficult fighter than Mayweather. But the one thing that Prince Nassim Ahmed has, unbelievable one-punch punching power. And that can change anything. And I've been a long time since I saw a fighter that can knock people out with one punch, and that includes heavyweights today. But uh, he's, he's special, so you can never discount 
President Seem Hamed with anyone he fights him, particularly the way that he's improving now. In fact, when Lennox Lewis was talking to me about Hamed possibly and Floyd Mellor, he said that would be a great fight. He says Mayweather's got such fast hands and combinations that Prince may not be able to handle it. He said, but then Prince could knock him out with one single punch too. So it would be a very interesting fight. Meanwhile, you heard the conversation between Derek Gaynor and Jay Nady. It certainly seemed to us as though Gaynor was okay and could have continued fighting. Jay Nady, the referee, we're told, has declined to speak with us. Larry Merchant's back in the ring, I assume, with Gaynor. <laughs> All right, Jim. Yes, I am with Smoke. You waited a long time for this, Smoke, and you finally got a chance. Um, you seem to be doing so well in the first round. Why did you feel you had to stand with him in the second round? First of all, I thank my Lord, save Jesus Christ, for letting me be okay. Um, I sat there because I, I didn't want him to keep getting the confidence to keep coming. So I was showing him that I could still, I could fight him inside and box him. And that's what I was doing. I was winning the fight. Um, the stop was pretty mature. But the, the left hook that knocked you down uh -huh. was something you never saw, was it? What do you mean? I saw a lot of things. I've been boxing professional for 12, for 10 years. I've been boxing since I was, since I was so, 11 years so old. So then he's a real puncher. He's a good puncher. He's a good puncher. He caught me with a good shot. I mean, I went down. The shot, when I got stopped, that was, I was just went down so I wouldn't get, continue to get hit with punches. Uh, all right, let's take a, a look at the replays of what happened here, and you describe uh, how you saw it and felt it. Okay, he was throwing punches at me. I was trying to slip, slip, slip. He caught me with a decent body shot. I went down here coming up. So I wouldn't continue to get punched. Caught me a good hook then. I went down to one knee. Now that looks like the second knockdown. That was the second, knock, that was the second knockdown. All right. And I was firm. All right. Now, were you c coherent? Did you oh, feel you knew where you were and what was going on? Very much so. He asked me, are you okay? I handed him my gloves and I said, I'm fine. If you play it back, you can hear me tell him I'm fine. Then he stopped the fight. The first knockdown was more harder punch than the second knockdown. All right. We have the sound of that, so let's see if we can get that as the referee, Jay Nady, spoke to you. Okay. He still had good head movement. Called him a good shot there. I'm fine. No, no, fight I'm fine. So I said, what? Right. And I said, I'm fine. I'm All right. Fine. All right. We saw what we saw. I asked Jay Nady what he saw. He says that he felt that Smoke was still not completely stable on his feet and was rocking a little bit. So it was a judgment call. Uh, a lot of people thought that he could have given you more chance. But you were in serious trouble in that round. Um, no, I wasn't. I was, of course, he dropped me, yes, with a good shot. But I gave him my gloves, and I said I was fine. And you know, I want to continue to fight. All right, thank you. So just, Roy, you've spent a lot of time and energy with your friend Smoke Gaynor. What are your thoughts about what happened and how this fight uh, has ended? Well, I thought it was a pretty premature stoppage. I thought he gave the ref his gloves and said he was fine. Therefore, he should have been allowed to continue. This is a championship fight. This is not a dance. It's not a walk in the park. This is a fight. It's, you can go down. I went down. Muhammad Ali went down. The best fighters go down. If you get up and you regain conscious, especially if you're ahead in the fight and you can you are coherent enough to tell the ref that you're okay. I feel as though the ref should give you the chance to fight. Now, if he would have gotten knocked down again, I could have understood the ref stopping it. But at least give him a chance to finish so that there's no doubt in nobody's mind, not only his or mine, but no doubt in nobody's mind, watching or here, and everything would be cool. All right, thank you very much, Smoke, Roy, Jim.